very strict evaluators come to a meeting thinking, I'm going to really give it to this person because they're, they, haven't, they haven't delivered, they're not doing what they were supposed to do. And so they feel that by just being strict, they can hold that space and have them do something. The problem is we all have mirror neurons in our brain. So even if you're not saying anything overtly, if you have the intention to get somebody or you have an emotion of anger that you're not showing, it will automatically mirror in the other person's brain. And so they will then go into defensive mode and they won't be able to hear you. So the notion of coming to a meeting with a positive intention is super important because you want that to mirror in the other person's brain. Secondly, if you want change, what we do know is that if you, if you are an evaluator who's creating stress, the moment you have stress, it turns on habit circuits in the brain and people go back to doing what they used to do rather than thinking about the change. So you don't want to just have stress. The third myth is some evaluators feel, you know, I don't have any time for games. This is a transparent process. I'm going to give you a negative appraisal and I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think. Now on the surface, that sounds fine. If, that's, if, if those are the facts, those are the facts. The problem is the person who's hearing you, when, they, when, when you give them a negative appraisal, studies show that this actually decreases their trust. It puts them on defense. And as Indran pointed out, they actually start focusing on the past. But I did this, but I tried this, but this didn't work rather than thinking about what they can do about the future. Then there's a very common myth, which is people feel that if you coach someone using goals, if you say, okay, here are the, here's my evaluation and these are the new goals, that somehow the person is going to listen to that and actually do well. But Richard Boyatzis and colleagues have found that actually goal-directed coaching activates the fight or flight response in the brain. The brain goes into panic mode and superior to that is compassion-oriented coaching. So rather as an evaluator, rather than saying, here are your goals, this is what we need to achieve. Of course, you have to articulate the goals, but how you articulate the goals is important and articulating it with compassion actually matters. Then there's a theory called selfish goal theory where we all assume that if we tell someone what a goal is, they're going to carry it out. But any person working with a different environment or with a different government may have multiple other goals. For example, they may want to avoid conflict. And so you as the evaluator are saying, go and do this. In their minds, their desire to avoid conflict is greater. Similarly, if in an evaluation setting, if you're working with a government or you're working with, with any group of people and your, your conflict avoidance goal is higher, you as the evaluator want to try to understand that. Then there are other things as well, like ironic process theory, which was studied by Daniel Wegner at Harvard, who found that if you frame goals as do not do this, under stress, the brain does the exact opposite. So what we know is that how you frame the goals actually matter.